thank you, David, so much. And okay, uh, now I'm getting some message. Continue. Okay. Um, uh, thanks to the organizers uh, for for giving me this opportunity. You know, normally if I have an audience uh, this large, uh, I'm talking about uh, Gaussian elimination or diagonalizing your emission matrices, which is great, of course. Uh, but but it is uh, really good to to be talking about uh, non-trivial mathematics to, to such a large audience. Now, I guess by now you've probably seen uh, my uh, uh, Douglas Adams uh, quotation. And if you recognize it, you know that, that it has the second part as well. Uh, so here is uh, the second part. So uh, I, you know, my, my guess is uh, that Adams was talking about uh, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle and Gettle's theorem and things like that. That, that you know, no matter what we do, uh, no matter how much we think we are in control, there is always uh, something else, um, uh, something that is unimaginably more complicated uh, than, that than we thought uh, before. And now uh, the main point of my talk is not uh, that uh, everybody should be learning set theory by no means, uh, but uh, it is just that everybody should be aware of set theory and uh, aware of the fact that, that you know, that, that impossible point you're working on, that maybe it is indeed impossible. That may, maybe there are concrete mathematical reasons why a given problem cannot be solved uh, by using the rules uh, that we have uh, set out uh, to solve it. Now, uh, for most mathematicians, uh, even those who don't care and they shouldn't care normally about set theory, uh, rules are basically ZFC. So th th there is a set of very simple, very natural axioms plus axiom of choice uh, that we use all the time to solve problems. Well, some problems uh, just happen to be not solvable uh, by using uh, those rules. And uh, let's uh, move on. So I'm assuming that everybody here knows uh, what a cyst algebra is. Um, and unfortunately, for some technical reasons that I don't understand, I cannot write on my slides. So, so uh, my slides were actually meant to be written on, uh, which means uh, that, that, that uh, there is going to be a dimension of my talk uh, missing. Uh, uh, but I'll try to say uh, whatever. Um, uh, whatever is missing uh, from the pictures. So, uh, if you have a cyst algebra, then uh, you know we have uh, representations of those cyst algebras on one side and the states, uh, which are just uh, positive functionals on norm one on the other side. And by the GNS representation, uh, cyclic representations are the same as states. So, so uh, during my talk, I'll be switching between representations and states and between irreducible representations and pure states uh, at, uh, at will. Um, so uh, just to remind you uh, that, that uh, uh, for cyst algebras, uh, irreducible uh, means just one thing, whether, whether you're talking about uh, not non-existence of closed non-trivial invariant subspaces or just uh, invariant subspaces, uh, they're equivalent by, by Cardison's um, uh, transitivity theorem, basically. And another fact that I'll be using uh, later on is that uh, spatial equivalence of uh, irreducible representations is the same as unitary equivalence of the corresponding pure states. So one of the great things about cyst algebras is that that uh, whole uh, representation theory, at least reduced representation theory, uh, which is uh, naturally defined as an external uh, phenomenon, uh, is actually happening inside the cyst algebra. The question is how is the unitary group acting uh, on the space of pure states? Okay, so uh, I move to one of the you know, theorem that was proved uh, less than 20 years after uh, the Gelfand-Neimark uh, theorem um, uh, by Gleam, um, which basically resolved to a large extent uh, the theory of irreducible representations of separable cyst algebras. Um, so uh, if you have a simple and separable cyst algebra, uh, the, the, then uh, we have these six equivalent conditions. First one is that uh, A is not of type one, which is in this case uh, just the same as saying that, that A is not the algebra of compact operators or some Hilbert space. Second, uh, A has continued many unital inequivalent reduced representations. Uh, then next, it has at least two. 
uh, and, and so on. I'm not going to be talking much about the other uh, equivalences uh, uh, in, in this talk, uh, but uh, this uh, glimpse dichotomy or later glim efforts dichotomy actually influenced set theory uh, quite a bit. So, so ever since 1990, uh, this was a very important uh, driving force in theory of abstract um, uh, classification, but uh, that's a different talk. So I'll stick to this. So you see, uh, Grimm's theorem uh, was uh, proved uh, for separable cyst algebras. And uh, question, ob obvious question was uh, how much can be said about non-separable cyst algebras? Now, uh, the main implication uh, in Grimm's theorem really uh, is uh, from one to four. Uh, knowing that your algebra is not of type one, uh, getting this uh, copy of car algebra hidden somewhere as, as a quotient of one of its separable subalgebras. And the other implications are, well, more or less the consequences of uh, that and separability of A. Now, um, uh, this was extended to non-separable or I should say, not necessarily separable cyst algebras uh, by um, Sakai and others, primarily Sakai, I believe he did uh, uh, the, the deepest uh, work on, on, on the extension, extending of uh, Gleam's theorem. Uh, and now, you know, my, my plan was to actually write on the screen all these arrows uh, showing how implications go. Uh, I cannot do that. But uh, what is important here is uh, that one implication is missing. Uh, if you just know that A is not of type one, uh, it is not from here obvious uh, that uh, A should have uh, uh, inequivalent reduced representations. Um, and, uh, you know, presumably it should have uh, lots and lots of them. So some, some form of uh, glimpse dichotomy should hold for an arbitrary cyst algebra. And uh, now uh, Sakai proved his results in the early 70s, I believe. And uh, basically uh, this was a brick wall. So, so there, there was no progress um, in uh, this direction. And then theory uh, went in, in other beautiful directions, but, but uh, it just representation theory stayed here uh, for quite a while. And uh, uh, here is a problem uh, that Nymark formulated actually before uh, Gleam's theorem. So this is a very early result uh, in theory of cyst algebras. So first, he proved that uh, if you have algebra of compact operators on some Hilbert space, then all the irreducible representations are uh, unitarily equivalent, or spatially or unitarily makes no difference. And uh, this result is by today's standards an exercise. Um, and then Nymark asked uh, the obvious question, uh, is the converse of his theorem true? So if you have a cyst algebra that has exactly one Hilbert representation up to spatial equivalence, does it have to be the algebra of compact operators? And uh, in the attempts uh, to extend uh, Green's theorem to arbitrary cyst algebras, it became obvious that, that this is really the first problem to solve. So, so in a sense, the most embarrassing uh, problem um, uh, there. All right. So, by the way, uh, please uh, ask me if you have any questions. As you can see, as you will see, um, I'm, I'm going to avoid uh, technicalities as far as set theory goes, uh, but I'll definitely make sure to, to present a couple of proofs in operator algebras. So, I'll just tell you uh, where set theory can be useful and how, uh, where it can be used, but uh, without actually going uh, into, into all the fine details. So here's a theorem uh, by Alex uh, Rosenberg, um, uh, proved in 1953, uh, that, that uh, resolves Nymark's problem for separately represented uh, cyst algebras. So uh, basically, it is saying that a uh, counterexample to Nymark's problem cannot be uh, separately represented, uh, but uh, it, it says a little bit uh, more, really. Uh, uh, so uh, what I wanted to do is outline uh, the proof of, of, of this uh, theorem, right? So we have a separate represented simple infinite dimensional uh, cyst algebra, which is not type one, uh, then it has at least two inequivalent representations. So basically uh, the proof boils down to two observations. And uh, here is uh, the first observation. 
uh, if uh, A has unique irreducible representation, then every pure state of our algebra is implemented by a vector. In other words, for normal operator in A, uh, pure point spectrum and spectrum coincide. Right, which normally doesn't happen, right? But, but these are uh, interesting algebra. So th think of compact operators, right? That's exactly what happens in case of compacts. Uh, but for A, this is uh, going to happen. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, first part of the proof. And the second part of the proof is that uh, we can actually find the normal element uh, that has full spectrum inside our algebra. Uh, this can be proved in many different ways. I mean, you can prove it using Glimp's theorem, uh, but but uh, easy way to prove it is uh, just to, to fix a maximal abelian uh, C star subalgebra uh, D of A. Now D is uh, algebra of um, uh, continuous functions in some compact Hauser space. It is not too difficult to see that uh, that compact Hauser space cannot have isolated points. Because isolated point uh, in in, uh, in such a mass uh, would give you an ideal isomorphic to compact operators, uh, which we assumed uh, doesn't. I mean, so, so algebra would either would wouldn't be simple or uh, it would be equal to compact operators. And now, at the moment you have that, you can find a normal operator uh, with with uh, the spectrum. And now, what does that mean? Well, for this normal operator. Uh, for each point in its spectrum, there is a pure state that sends that operator to that point. So we have continuum many uh, pure states. And uh, as I said from the previous slide, uh, each one of those uh, pure states corresponds to, to a different eigenvalue for a vector. So, so what you really have is uh, continuum many orthogonal eigenvectors for our operator. And you cannot squeeze them into a separable Hilbert space. So actually, theorem shows a bit more, uh, not only uh, that, that it cannot be separately represented, uh, but uh, it cannot be represented on a, on a Hilbert space of uh, density character less than continuum. But, but it gives us only two inequivalent reduced representations, not more than two. If you think about it, you'll see that, that uh, you know, that doesn't seem to go further than that. So back to Nymax problem. So here is a beautiful theorem. Um, so I'm giving uh, you know several uh, sets of co-authors here uh, credit. Uh, it was formulated in Akim and Weaver, but really Kishimoto, Zawa, and Sakai uh, proved the, the most important um, bit of the theorem. And here it is. Uh, if A is a simple separable C algebra. And if phi and C are two uh, pure states on A, then we can find an extension B of A, uh, which has two important properties. First, uh, each one of our pure states has a unique pure state extension to B. And second, those extensions are equivalent. Now, uh, the way that uh, this is proved uh, is uh, by finding an automorphism uh, of A uh, which acts on the pure state space in exactly the right way. So it, it conjugates uh, phi to psi and also has some additional properties uh, that, that uh, assure that phi and psi have unique pure state extensions. Uh, and then B is uh, just the cross product. Um, my, my statement here is not doing justice to this. One can actually handle arbitrary countable set of pure states. So, so it's possible to soup this up to, to arbitrary countable uh, set, uh, but not more than that. Uh, you know, proof of this is uh, really a very, uh, very intricate um, uh, approximate intertwining argument. And as you know, if you have approximate intertwining, uh, it happens in countably many stages. At every stage, you do finitely many things. So, so at the end of the day, you just can take care of countably many things. Um, I'll come back to that point later on. Okay, so right, so, so here are the hints uh, uh, for, for the theorem, I already said it. Now, uh, back uh, to NIMAX problem. Uh, once you see this, uh, there is an obvious plan on uh, how to give a negative answer to Nymark's problem. You want to construct a simple cyst algebra, uh, which uh, is not of type one, 
but all of its pure states are equivalent, well, you just start uh, with your favorite uh, C star algebra, like A0 is the car algebra, for example, and then you keep on uh, iterating uh, this uh, Kishimoto Zawa Sakai theorem. Uh, and uh, at every point, you can make two of those pure states equivalent. And if you're very, very, very careful, by the end of the day, uh, you end up, um, I mean, if you do very careful bookkeeping, uh, you can get uh, C-st algebra such that all of its pure states are unitarily equivalent. Okay, sounds good. But now uh, you see, no matter how you're doing this, eventually uh, these C-st algebras are going to be of uh, not type one. So you might as well start uh, with one which is not type one. Uh, and then Gleam's theorem tells you that that algebra already has uh, continuum many in equivalent pure states. Uh, so you know, if you can make uh, equivalent only some of them. Remember, Kishimoto, Zawa, Sakai cannot handle more than countably many pure states. Uh, and there is a bookkeeping problem now. You see, you're trying to construct something in Aleph 1 many steps. You know, Aleph 1 is the least uncountable ordinal. Uh, and yet you have to take care of more than Aleph 1 tasks. C algebra of density Aleph 1 can have up to 2 to Aleph 1 uh, in equivalent pure states, and Aleph 1 is less than 2 to Aleph 1. So, this is the most non trivial set theory I'm going to say in my talk. I'll say one more thing. Uh, you see, uh, it is very important uh, that in this theorem uh, we have assumption that A is separable. Uh, conclusion is just false if A is non separable. Already Kishimoto, Zawa, Sakai uh, gave uh, examples showing that, and you know, basically, um, uh, theorem uh, fails quite miserably for non-separable C algebras. So really all that you can hope is go up to Aleph 1 and, and somehow uh, hope to, to get uh, that everything clicks with all pure states are equivalent. But, but this is really the main idea uh, in the proof. Uh, this, oh yes, right. So, so uh, second main idea is that, that I'm, I'm abusing uh, this talk to advertise my book. Uh, so uh, all the set theory that, that uh, was relevant to operate algebras at the time when it appeared, which was uh, in January this year, is in, in, in the book. Uh, so if you want to learn more, um, well, this is not clickable, unfortunately, but anyway, um, I guess you can find it. Anyway, um, so uh, here is uh, the, the magic uh, bit here. Uh, introduced by Ronald Jensen uh, in late 60s, uh, so uh, called uh, Diamond Axiom or Diamond Aleph 1. Um, it facilitates transfinite recursive constructions of length Aleph 1 that accomplish two to Aleph 1 tasks. Now, uh, as I said, I I'm not going to make any attempt to actually formulate the axiom. Uh, the there is uh, this uh, element of, of uh, magic to it. You know, you don't have time uh, to to, uh, to accomplish two to Aleph 1 tasks, but each one of those tasks somehow reflects to some earlier stage of construction. Uh, and uh, if you're careful enough, uh, if you know what you're doing, uh, then, then uh, those reflections somehow, dealing with reflections suffices to accomplish all of those tasks. Um, uh, I should say, you no know, reflections, basically, uh, if you're a cyst algebra, you must be familiar with Blackadar's method. Uh, it is that kind of thing, that, that uh, from non-separable to separable, many things reflect to, to some initial stages of construction. But, but it's important that this is a non-trivial axiom and that it, it for example, implies continuum hypothesis. So, so it is going beyond uh, what is normally assumed in ZFC. And now, given all that, uh, Ackerman and Weaver proved that indeed uh, Jensen's diamond implies that uh, there is a non type 1 C algebra with a single reduced representation up to unitary equivalence. And the proof, well, module of these two big black boxes, you can see what the proof is. So, so by iterating Kishimoto, Zawa, Sakai cross product construction, taking inductive limits at the limits, and uh, in a very clever way, coding all the pure states using Jensen's diamond, uh, you can get the counterexample. Uh, so this result is already oh, 16 years old, and uh, it's still not known uh, whether uh, this was a necessary application of set theory. It could be that some very clever construction, uh, Justin ZFC gives uh, such an example, 
we just don't know. Uh, but uh, any questions at this point? Okay, so I'll go on um, and present a few other um, applications. So uh, just to recall, uh, this is Gleam's theorem once again. So uh, what we uh, just learned is that uh, one doesn't imply three for certain C-th algebras in certain models of Z-theorem. Uh, okay, so here is uh, something that Ilan Hirschberg and I proved a couple of years ago. Uh, basically, by, by modifying um, Akiman Weaver construction and souping up uh, Kishimoto Zawa Sakai construction a little bit, uh, as I said, we can handle arbitrary countable set of pure states and uh, you can do what you want with them. And, and once you realize that it, it's, it's reasonably easy, uh, to see that it actually gleams dichotomy can fail as well. Uh, that, that from diamond you can construct a simple c algebra which has exactly 15 uh, equivalence classes of uh, your, your useful presentations. Um, but, but there is more, so uh, I apologize for the next slide. It is uh, long, okay, it looks at first as a laundry list, uh, so just bear with me uh, and uh, here. Wait, why is? Oh, okay. Uh, so uh, here are other examples of uh, non-separable C algebras. And, and uh, each one of these phenomena uh, listed here is something that uh, just doesn't happen for separable C algebras. Right, so they're all examples of phenomena uh, that can happen uh, in non-separable world. Uh, that, that uh, don't happen uh, with separable C algebras. So, so uh, actually, the first one is uh, the main result in my paper. Uh, simple nuclear, even AF C algebra, which is not isomorphic to its opposite algebra, and uh, it has no outer automorphisms. Um, uh, then Andrea Vaccaro proved uh, that, that uh, to all of those examples uh, mentioned before, you can actually add uh, arbitrary prescribed separable tracial simplex. Um, and uh, again, Ilan and I actually managed to, to construct a hyperfinite to one factor, which is not isomorphic to its opposite. Uh, it's, 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 it's pretty dual of his density LF1. It has trivial fundamental group and no outer automorphisms. Now, now this is curious because uh, its ultra power uh, has a full fundamental group. So, so this is the first example of two one factor such that the fundamental group of its ultra power is not just the closure of its own fun fundamental group. Uh, and then uh, Yuhei Suzuki constructed tensorially prime simple AF algebra. So it's not Z absorbing in particular. Uh, um, and, uh, and okay, more examples. So uh, Nick Weaver, I should say prime, but not primitive C algebra. Now, uh, I gave this as a list, but, but actually uh, these examples are different. Uh, you see uh, the first three were proved using Jensen's diamond and uh, the last three are just proved in ZFC. Uh, so, and we don't know whether diamond is, is necessary. Uh, so, uh, I don't have anything else to say uh, about uh, these examples. So, uh, I'm basically ending the first part of my talk, which was about uh, constructing interesting examples of these algebras using diamond. Uh, let me know if there are any questions. So, if not, I'll just move to the second part. Oh no, sorry, 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 I forgot. No, uh, first part is not over yet. So most recent result by, by Daniel Calderon and myself, uh, just, uh, it just appeared on the archive yesterday. Um, uh, so here is, oops, okay. So uh, this is where it would be good to, to, to be able to edit the slides. So A is not, uh, A on this slide is not uh, the car algebra, it's uh, in the lemma. So A is, um, some cyst algebra. Uh, so uh, we can get uh, cyst algebra, which has exactly, let's say, two irreducible representations, uh, but it is separately represented. Uh, and the second bit is uh, that, that 
we are not using Jensen's diamond to construct it. Uh, we are using a certain weakening of uh, Jensen's diamond. Now it's still way beyond ZFC, but, but a much uh, weaker axiom uh, than diamond. Um, and uh, what this shows is uh, that that, uh, that uh, Rosenberg's Alex Rosenberg's theorem um, cannot be improved much. You see, uh, a theorem was uh, that if you have this simple C style, which is non type one, if it's separately represented, uh, then it has at least two inequivalent EREPs. Well, uh, this tells you that, that uh, it can have exactly two. Uh, the other one is going to be a non-separable Hilbert space necessarily. We actually can, can do more, you know, can have something that has exactly 15 EREPs, uh, three of them are on separable spaces and 12 are on, on non-separable. Uh, but but uh, never mind that, uh, you know, uh, the really, to me, uh, the main contribution of the paper is uh, that uh, this is really the first non-trivial application of forcing you know, Cohen's method of forcing it he used to, to construct, to, to you know, prove uh, independence to continue hypothesis from the AFC, uh, first application of forcing directly to operator algebras. So uh, what we are doing is we are adding a Kishimoto Ozawa Sakai type automorphism generically uh, using forcing. And uh, that automorphism does uh, what uh, you know, makes pure states equivalent and uh, things like that. And uh, the second idea in the proof is, uh, and now it is in this lemma that we sh I should have said that A is equal to, to the Carl algebra. So I just missed the environment, um, which must have been known, but uh, Daniel and I had to, to reinvent it. So if anybody has a reference, I would appreciate it. Uh, we have an automorphism of the Carl algebra uh, that is uh, involution. And there is a pure state which is sent to itself by our, by our automorphism. If you take cross product, uh, then uh, this pure state has exactly two pure state extensions. Uh, they're called C plus one and C minus one. I'll leave it to you to guess why, why they're called like that. So uh, where do numbers um, plus and minus one appear? But uh, most importantly for us, uh, if you construct, uh, if you know, to the GNS representations, uh, the GNS Hilbert space for the cross product is exactly the same as uh, GNS uh, Hilbert space for the algebra. So you're not uh, enlarging this Hilbert space. And we can add uh, more properties. Uh, we can have the, uh, with any prescribed action on any finite set of pure states, so that we can assure that, that different pure states have unique extensions that we can make some of them equivalent. Uh, and uh, last one, most important to me, uh, is that uh, every pure state of A that V is generic over has a unique pure state extension to B. So, so this is what I uh, referred to before, that uh, phi is added by forcing. Now, if you have, in some model of set theory, it has some pure states, that then uh, forcing is, in a sense, uh, taking extension of a field. You're adding a new element, which is this automorphism. And uh, the cross product has the property that all the old pure states are going to have unique pure state extensions, but you're going to inevitably add more uh, every time you add such an automorphism. So there is still a problem of, of catching the tail. Um, okay. So that ends uh, the first part of the talk. And uh, to recap it, uh, the regularization principles such as diamond or continuum hypothesis can be used to construct interesting examples of operator algebras. Now, uh, one can object to this uh, that, that uh, you're never going to meet those uh, ceased algebras anywhere, that they are just constructed to, as counterexamples to some problems. So uh, can set theory tell us anything about operator algebras that you already know, that we actually use? And uh, the answer is yes. So uh, here is a question of uh, Brown, Douglas, and Fillmore. So uh, right, BDF theory was uh, one of the uh, more important And uh, I'm not going to go into, into what they did, uh, just to what they didn't do. So uh, in many ways, uh, the most obvious open problem that it left open after the development of, of uh, BDF 
a theory was uh, can you tell uh, if you look at the of the on the linear operator Hilbert space mod unitary, its fret home index is one. Look at uh, the image of, of its other joint. Can you tell, somehow tell them apart? You see, all, all the information given by BDF theory, everything that we know, uh, just uh, can tell you what is the absolute value uh, of fret home index of an operator, but, but uh, it cannot tell you its sign. And in a sense, it's really what they were asking. Can, can, can you somehow see the sign? Or I state it in terms of K1, right? So K1 uh, of the clean algebra Z cannot be inner. Uh, so uh, second question that they asked was, uh, does calcium algebra have an outer automorphism at all? And uh, first, uh, Phillips and Weaver proved uh, that, uh, assuming continuum hypothesis, uh, the Kalkin algebra has two to, two to aleph one automorphisms, uh, and uh, most of those automorphisms are necessarily outer. So, so it has plenty of it has huge automorphism group. Uh, and few years later, I proved uh, the axioms imply uh, the all and specialisms are inner. Now, uh, you may know what is continuum hypothesis. You probably haven't heard of forcing axioms. I'm going to say more about it. But, but uh, this is uh, an all of uh, you know, natural question about C algebras, uh, which happens to be independent from the FC. Uh, I should say a few words about the first real question, right? So this was really a test question. Uh, we don't know uh, whether uh, in some model of set theory there can be a K1 reversing automorphism. Uh, what we know uh, by my result is that in some model of set, models of set theory there, there isn't one, right? If all automorphisms are inner, then there are no K theory reversing automorphisms. And uh, also, from some meta mathematical considerations, uh, it is really continuum hypothesis. Basically, uh, to me at least, uh, there is no set theory left uh, in, in what remains of this question. It's really now just uh, cyst algebras and, and uh, model theory and just using continuum hypothesis somehow to diagonalize. So it's back to diagonalization again. So I move to the next slide. So what are the assumptions? Now, I apologize uh, for the footnote. Uh, it's, uh, anyway, so it's going to make sense in a moment. Um, okay, so what is continuum hypothesis? Now, now you may you know the way that uh, Cantor stated it is uh, that, that uh, continuum uh, has the least uh, uncountable cardinality, but, but for our purposes, really equivalent formulation is uh, that every corona and every ultra power of separable cyst algebra uh, can be written as the union of an increasing chain of separable cyst algebras. So, so this is operator algebra version of continuum hypothesis. Uh, and uh, what uh, that, that uh, gives us is uh, that uh, recursive constructions, transfinite recursive constructions, in which you can handle countably many tasks at a time, uh, can actually work to, to construct uh, interesting uh, objects. Uh, related to coronas and ultra powers. Um, I should say uh, that, that uh, I'm not giving uh, justice to, to the Phillips Weaver construction by, by saying this. Uh, th their proof is actually probably the most complicated uh, continuum hypothesis proof that I'm aware of. Uh, because uh, even this formulation that they actually have to construct uh, many chains of separable cyst algebra simultaneously, and uh, the way they are doing it is uh, they are actually uh, finding that their automorphisms are all implemented by unitaries. And uh, every uh, automorphism of Kalkin algebra that, that we know of uh, presently uh, is uh, locally trivial. So if, if you take any separable subset of the Kalkin algebra, there is a unitary somewhere outside of that set which actually implements the automorphism. Uh, 
So, so you just construct automorphisms by, by induction, somehow diagonalizing overall unitaries. Uh, but uh, they have to use very subtle KK theoretic machinery to, to make sure that at, at limit stages, construction doesn't break down. I, I cannot say anything more about that. So um, uh, in the other direction, forcing axioms, uh, well, I can just wave my hand to say roughly what they are. Uh, you have a class of compact Hausdorff spaces that has to be very carefully chosen. Uh, and you postulate that for every single space in your class, uh, bare category theorem on steroids works. Namely, you have a collection of Aleph 1 dense open sets. If you intersect them, what you get is dense. Remember, Aleph 1 is the least uncountable cardinal. Uh, so uh, this is just plain false for certain compact Hausdorff spaces. And uh, by, by incredible work of Foreman, Magidor, and Shellach, um, we know exactly what is the largest class K for which uh, this makes sense. And I should say that uh, recently uh, that there, were, there was a competing uh, theory of uh, Hugh Wood in uh, Pmax models. So, so that there were really two apparently incompatible uh, negations of continuum hypothesis, if you will. Uh, recently, by, by, by wonderful uh, uh, results of uh, Aspero and Schindler, uh, they were unified. So basically, uh, now when we say forcing axioms, we know exactly what we mean. There is one model one axiom really. Uh, I should say one more thing, you know, continuum hypothesis is a very strong axiom, which means that its negation is uh, very weak. So you have to strengthen its negation in a highly non-trivial way, and that's exactly what this is telling you. So it tells you not just uh, that, that no matter how you line up Aleph 1 real numbers, there are more of them, it tells you that, that, uh, that they are also generic uh, in, in some uh, very subtle ways. Unfortunately, I cannot say anything else about uh, the proof of my theorem, uh, except that it's very long. Um, uh, so uh, it's really one has to do all sorts of things, including uh, actually non-trivial non uh, operator algebraic considerations. Uh, but I should move on to my talk uh, once I check if there are questions. Uh, okay, so uh, we come to coronas. Um, uh, if A is separable and uh, not unital, uh, then M of A is the multiplier algebra of A. Um, and uh, the corona or the ultra multiplier algebra is the quotient M of A over A. Um, so Kalkin algebra, for example, if you take A to be the compact operators, you get Kalkin algebra. And uh, Sam Koski and I conjectured a couple of years ago that uh, for any uh, separable non-unital cyst algebra, uh, under continuum hypothesis, uh, its corona has maximum number of automorphisms. Uh, they, they are all outer and non-trivial. And forcing axioms imply that all automorphisms are trivial. Now, I'm not saying inner here uh, because uh, that they could have outer automorphisms. Uh, think, think, for example, uh, if A is a billion, uh, it is not going to have any outer automorphisms at all. But, but uh, homeomorphisms of its uh, pure state space or its spectrum mostly give rise to automorphisms, but, but they're, they're trivial. So uh, basically, if you just think about this for, for a couple of hours, then we'll come up uh, with our definition. So it's, it's really, you know, only the obvious automorphisms exist, and they are somehow uh, coded by real numbers. So, so there, there are not too many of them. They're not going to be wild automorphisms. Um, now, uh, there has been a lot of uh, work uh, on this conjecture, uh, some of it before it was stated. Uh, first, Walter Rudin and Safran Shellach uh, confirmed uh, the conjecture when A is uh, just C0. Uh, right? in, in this case, uh, corona is uh, just continuous functions on uh, checks on remainder of natural numbers. And I should say that, that you know, coronas are just non-commutative versions of uh, checks on remainders. Uh, and then uh, the case when A is the complex is really Phillips Weaver and uh, my result. 
so Sam and I proved uh, many instances, like if A is stable and, and some other cases. And then Alessandro Vignati confirmed many more instances. So it's still still somewhat open, but 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 uh, basically there is a substantial support. And now um, recently uh, in uh, quite spectacular tour de force result, uh, Alessandro confirmed two. So so two is uh, has just been confirmed. Under very mild forcing axioms, uh, all automorphisms uh, of uh, any corona are trivial. Um, so, uh, so, so this is example in which uh, set theory gives you uh, non-trivial information about uh, objects that we actually care about, right? So, it's uh, uh, we use uh, coronas uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, okay. So, uh, I, I want to give you a sample. Uh, of uh, which I believe shows exactly to what extent uh, continuum hypothesis on one side and the uh, force axioms on the other side give us wildly different theories. So here is a very simply defined class of coronas. Take infinite set of natural numbers. And now uh, look at this algebra. Uh, take a product of MNs for N indexed in C and mod out uh, by direct sum. So uh, this is this is example of, of a corona, uh, and uh, now if you look at these algebras, well, at first sight they may all look the same, but but then you can think a little bit and see that at some of them uh, you can distinguish by looking at k zero. Uh, you know, k zero of some of these uh, unit is going to be divisible by two, in some others it's not divisible by two, depending how you choose your set x. So, so there are actually continuum isomorphism classes uh, of algebras of this sort, but uh, I don't know if anything else can be said uh, by using classical methods about um, variety of uh, these algebras. Uh, but by using non-classical methods, we can prove something. So first, uh, Said Gassemi proved that under continuum hypothesis, uh, th th there are many uh, non-trivially isomorphic examples here. So you can find an infinite set uh, X such that if you go to any further infinite subset, all of those algebras are isomorphic. Uh, essentially, you know, just to give you an idea of what's going on. So what they said about K theory, you, for example, uh, want to take your infinite set X to be all powers of two so that, that, that you know exactly what K0 is, so it doesn't stay, uh, it, it's, it's not an abstraction, but there are also some very uh, subtle uh, model theoretic abstractions, and you have to diagonalize through all of them in pretty much the same way as, as you diagonalize uh, over um, K theory. Fortunately, there are only count only many things to, to take care of. Um, and, uh, and you get uh, many isomorphic ones. On the other hand, uh, and uh, this was proved by Said consistently and then McKenna even at it from, from forcing axioms, but I guess you wouldn't care about uh, distinction. I mean, it, it's, it only matters to set theorists. Um, forcing axioms imply that uh, GX and GY are isomorphic if and only if X and Y are equal modulo finite set. A and not only that, isomorphisms are trivial. So, so now at this point, I guess you see what, what, what I meant by, by trivial isomorphisms, uh, that they're really basically, you're, you're ju ju uh, just matching uh, those uh, matrix algebras uh, dimension by dimension. Um, okay, so uh, one more uh, application, now this time to ultra powers. So uh, as I said before, if you have separable C star algebra, uh, and if you have ultra filter natural numbers, ultra power has cardinality continuum. You can write it as increasing union of separable sub algebras, and, and then continuum hypothesis tells you that, that, that you can uh, do interesting things to it. Now, this is where I really wanted to, to draw something. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot. Uh, so, uh, continuum hypothesis implies that there is a non principal ultra filter of natural numbers. So they are not all the same. They are quite different ultra filters of natural numbers, uh, such that for any separable C star algebra B, uh, the quotient map uh, from the asymptotic sequence algebra of B to the O, uh, AU should be BU, <coughs> sorry, uh, to the ultra power has a right inverse. 
or in other words, uh, the, the exact sequence splits. Uh, this has a non-trivial bearing to, uh, to some methods used in Elliot classification. Uh, basically, it tells you some, something that everybody knew already, uh, that, that to a large extent, uh, ultra powers and asymptotic sequence algebras are interchangeable. Uh, this actually gives a very concrete reason why, why they are interchangeable. Um, and uh, interesting thing is uh, that uh, this uh, theorem was used by, uh, well, sorry, was proved by using uh, axioms beyond ZFC, but it has corollaries which can be proved in ZFC. So, so uh, this is uh, you know, another uh, beautiful thing here that uh, if you use continuum hypothesis to prove something about separable cyst algebras, uh, the then by, by, by meta mathematical uh, arguments, uh, you can remove your, your continuum hypothesis. So, so it can help you prove something, but, but basically, once you prove it, uh, you actually uh, uh, you can prove that, that it wasn't uh, necessary. Um, so, uh, this was application to ultra powers, and uh, right. So now, uh, in some models of ZFC, the conclusion is false for all ultra filters. So no matter how, how carefully you choose ultra filter, uh, there is no right inverse. And even uh, ultra power is not even going to be embeddable, no matter how, into asymptotic sequence algebra. Uh, one of those models is uh, also famous among um, uh, functional analysts. Uh, it is uh, Woodin's. Um, actually Soloway's um, uh, uh, model for uh, in which uh, all um, homomorphisms between Banach algebras are uh, uh, continuous. So, so this is a theorem of Woodin, but Soloway also had a model for that. And in his model, um, uh, these algebras uh, just don't embed. And uh, another thing is that actually in every model of ZFC, including models of CH, um, hypothesis, there is an ultra filter for which the conclusion is false. And, and this is actually fairly easy. So, so, so you see, uh, you have to choose both your model and uh, your, uh, I think somebody just asked me a question. Let me just see. Oh, I see. So now I have to do, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I just saw that, that uh, there was somebody, uh, that there was apparently a question in the chat, uh, but because I'm sharing my screen, I cannot, uh, I cannot see it. Someone asking if the audio has, uh, if the yeah, if the audio has disappeared. But I I can hear you, and okay. uh, uh, other people have replied to say they can hear you. Okay, All right. Okay, thank you. Um, right. So 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 you see, you have to uh, you have a theorem in which both model and ultra filter have to be chosen carefully, and yet you can use it to to prove concrete uh, theorems about. Uh, separable cyst algebras without any, any fancy set theory. Uh, okay, so, uh, so, so, so I'm going to end uh, with uh, the following slide. Um, question asked by Menachem Magidor. Uh, is there a statement independent of ZFC whose truth can be verified by a physical experiment? Uh, now, this may sound crazy, but, but all sorts of things that happen to be true sounded crazy at the time. Um, no such statement is known presently. Uh, Itamar Pitovsky uh, actually applied set theory to, to, to find some partial explanation for EPR paradox, which, which is not the explanation. But, but, but uh, you know, I just wanted to end with this because uh, you know, who knows? Uh, for all this is uh, weirder than we think. So, so, so. Uh, maybe this is possible. Uh, thank you for attention. That's all I want to say.